Hey guys, welcome to today's episode and you are in for a treat because we have Dr. Biamonte and he has been helping celebrities, political figures, and patients all over the world for over 30 years. He is a world-recognized authority in advanced nutrition, and he also specializes in candida and thyroid. And today we're going to talk about how the two are intertwined. So Dr. Biamonte, welcome. Hi. Nice to be here. Yes. So you... You know, you specialize, you you have a couple different websites. You've got New York City Thyroid Doctor and you've got New York City Candida Doctor. But are you now in Florida doing some stuff too? I guess you see clients all over the world, so it really doesn't matter because you do most of your stuff on Zoom, right? That's true. So it doesn't matter where I am. You can throw me anywhere and I can still help somebody. Yeah. Well, you've been helping people all over and have helped me as well. And so we're so grateful for all the work that you do. But let's first talk about how candida and thyroid are kind of intertwined and people kind of keep those really separate. And you say, hey, there's a lot of things that are intertwined with the two. Right. This is why I have the website, the New York City Thyroid Doctor and then the New York City Candida Doctor. It's because... Candida has a particular affinity for the thyroid gland in terms of um, making it toxic, interfering with the hormone function of the T4 and T3. Um, Candida, there are are doctors out there I know who swear there's no such thing as um, low thyroid. They claim that everybody with low thyroid has Candida. Mm. And we know that we know that leaky gut syndrome is a very common thing that you find in patients with Hashimoto's. And we know that leaky gut principally comes from having candida. That's what a major cause of leaky gut would be candida. So that would link leaky gut and candida with Hashimoto's. Mm. That's why this is so interesting. Is because so many of the symptoms overlap. A person who has candida and a person with low thyroid, if you, if you drew concentric circles around their symptoms, you'd see there's such an overlap with their symptoms. That's what I find particularly fascinating. Well, one of the things that I like about you that you talk about, because candida, if you guys don't know, is a yeast that lives in your digestive tract. And when it grows and it gets out of control, it causes a whole host of symptoms. And it it really makes it hard to identify and treat because, you know, people think, okay, well, they they blame it on other things when it really is candida. Um, But here's the problem with candida. If you treat it too aggressively, then you feel so bad that you can't even get out of bed. And I know that for me, I've had massive candida issues, but I know that if you treat it too aggressively, like right now for me, I am working harder than I've ever worked in my life. I'm under the most stress I've ever been under in my whole life. And so I have to do this balancing act because I I literally can't take off of work and just like lay in bed for, you know, a week while the candida symptoms die off. But at the same time, you've got to have someone like Dr. Biamonte that says, all right, we're going to have to do this gradually because if you go too aggressive, now the die-off symptoms are so bad that you feel terrible. So talk about that just for a little well, bit. Well, that's that's why it's important to have a program that has built-in safety facets to help you deal with the die-off, which is a very interesting subject in itself. On my program, the Phase Zero program, which you're familiar with, Phase Zero helps the person handle die-off because one of the two of the major products, Candy Scrub and Candy Loosener, um, deal with die-off directly. Candy Loosener has molybdenum and some other products in there that help your body specifically detoxify alcohols, which candida is constantly releasing into your system. And it also helps detoxify other mycotoxins and neurological toxins that the candida releases. Now, when you kill candida and the cell breaks down and it starts to uh, um, release its innards, you could say, all these more of these toxins are released. Mm-hmm. So you have to be able to detoxify them. Otherwise, you're going to feel really sick. 
the candy scrub product contains different fibers and binders, which specifically bind to the, the, the waste products of the candy as it's dying so that it leaves your body through your stool rather than building up in your system and making you sick. So some of the key things that detoxify the waste products from candida, one I just mentioned, which is molybdenum. The other is pantothene, which is the uh, vitamin B5, pentothenic acid, and the coenzyme, more in a coenzyme form. Pantothene is great to help detoxify candida. And then fiber and binders of different kinds are needed because you have to have the binders to attract the waste products of the candida and bind them so that they'll be excreted through your stool. And then, of course, to do that, you have to have fibers. So you, you can use a different a variety of binders. Like we use some sodium alginate, which is a good binder for these toxins. We use bentonite. Any, any of the clays or the, or the binders are very good. Chlorella is another one which helps. And then most fibers do. Uh, psyllium, of course, is a go-to fiber. Apple pectin, citrus pectin. All of these types of fibers help to flush the candida out of your system. Even vitamin and small amounts vitamin C also can help you detoxify the waste products too. So when you're doing a candida program, you have to be taking these, these substances to help you deal with the die off of them. Otherwise, as you were saying, it's just overwhelming. Yeah. So let's talk about if someone came to see you, because I think one of the things that I'd love to do is when someone comes and meets with you and, and does this and you guys, if you have any kind of things that you would say, oh, you know what? I do think I have candida. Um, and let, let's just for people, let's talk about, you know, some of them. I think people know fatigue, feeling spaced out, flu-like symptoms maybe mood swings, anything like that, kind, kind of give some of the more um, candida t- symptoms that maybe people won't think about. Well, one of the things, well, of course, thyroid problems would be one. If somebody came to me and told me about all their thyroid problems, I would ask them when they began. And then I would look to see whether or not the thyroid problems began after a period of extreme stress or being in the hospital or being on antibiotics. Because that, those would be incidences where the candida would come about. So let's say if the person was, had an operation on something disrelated, they had a, show, a, a sports-related operation on their shoulder, and then after that point, they had a lot of digestive problems, and now they're starting to develop thyroid-related symptoms, I would suspect they developed candida when, in the hospital from the antibiotics. Yeah, and one thing that you have told me, which I don't think normal people talk about, which you had said, is that if you have an intolerance to perfumes, odors, or fumes, or anything like that, like more than the average person, Mm -hmm. um, or if like things really worsen in like a damp, muggy, or moldy places, like, or if it rains, or even major joint issues. Um, because that's not like if you read something, those three particular ones that are, you know, that's why you are such a specialist, but you kind of, you know, everyone says, okay, candida is like, you know, tired or, you know, right, bloating, digestive things, problems, general ones, cognitive problems. Those are some of the more typical ones, but the, the symptoms you were just referring to are happen to be some of the top symptoms and the most common of leaky gut syndrome. Mm-hmm. inability to tolerate chemicals and chemical smells, perfumes and things like that would very well suggest the person has leaky gut. And then where does a person, how does he develop leaky gut? Well, he gets it from having candida. So when I had a conversation with someone not long ago and virtually what you just went through all unfolded in the conversation, they told me, well, you know, I don't go out much anymore. So I said, well, that's interesting. So used to, I used to go to my, the bar or the pub down the block but I stopped going because I noticed that I couldn't handle the cigarette smoke and the perfume people were wearing. And then he said, and on top of that, my tolerance for alcohol has dropped so much. I can have one drink and be hung over for the next few days. Well, that, that would be a classic person with candida and leaky gut right there. 
So it is just so hard to overstate how important magnesium is for all aspects of our health. Everyone is talking about how critical magnesium is. And there is a long list of symptoms and diseases that can be eased or even treated with magnesium. So way back when, doctors used magnesium for all kinds of conditions like arrhythmia, constipation, preeclampsia, even seizures. And now it's kind of used as a last resort. It's absolutely essential to our health and our well-being. This is a huge problem because magnesium deficiency can increase your risk for all these different diseases. So I am really a big advocate of getting as many nutrients as we can through a well-balanced diet. Like that is super important. But I really feel like right now that food alone isn't going to work because our soil is so overworked and so mineral depleted that it's just lacking so much magnesium. Fortunately, Buy Optimizers has the solution. Their magnesium is the only one that has seven types of magnesium, and it's specially formulated to reach every tissue in your body. So go to magbreakthrough.com slash waste away. That's magbreakthrough.com slash waste away and get 10% off and use the code waste away to get your magnesium. Well, what I want you to do, I want you to, because I'm telling you guys, you need to call Dr. Biamonte and I want you to be able to go back and listen because it is, it's a process. So explain what you put people on, like what they need to do on phase zero and phase one, what that looks like and the different things that they have to do so that um, they can even go back and listen to this once they, you know, contact your office and get with you on this explain kind of the steps for phase zero, phase one, phase two. Okay, so the the steps have been outlined from experience more than anything else. Because I've been doing this for so long that I learned what works and what doesn't work from listening to so many other patients and their experiences. So we, we learned that many patients with candida to some degree have colon problems. Their colon's toxic or they have slow digestion. They tend to be constipated. And a lot of them have parasites. So the first thing we do with the patient is we put them on phase zero, which is a combination of a parasite colon cleanse, and it also increases their bowel movement so that they flush out their system and they're able to detoxify properly because you can't detoxify if you're constipated. That's a, a basic rule of thumb. So that's okay, the let first me, thing. Let me stop you right there because this is, this is one thing that I really believe strongly in, and you tell me if you agree. I believe, obviously, we are passionate about intermittent fasting. And so we want you to eat or eat in a smaller eating window here at on our podcast. But don't you agree, if you're going to eat once a day, if you only eat once a day, you should be eliminating at least once a day. If you're eating twice a day, eliminate twice a day. If for some reason you're eating three times a day, I feel like the healthiest people on the planet are those people, if if you're eating once a day, you're eliminating once a day, it's twice a day. Like my mom, you know, she eat, she usually eats like twice a day. If she eats three times in a day, she's eliminating three times. Like I've never seen anyone in the better health than my mom. And she says, if I eat once a day, I'm pooping once a day. If I eat mm-hmm. twice a day, I poop twice a day. Do you agree with that statement? Yes, this, this is based on the fact that it's considered normal digestion or normal transit time to be 24 hours. Most, most nutritionists will agree that if your body's operating correctly, you should eliminate the food you eat in about 24 hours. So that would go right along with what you're, what you're saying. And the concept of three meals a day, by the way, developed, was developed in England many, many, maybe 200 or 100 years ago based on travel. People had to travel to get to work and the way the bus schedules were in this whole bit, they ate breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's how it all developed. If you go to Africa and you look at the primitive people there, the primitive people in Africa typically eat four to five times a day. And that's exactly how many times a day they poop. Mm. If, you, if you go back and you look at the, there was a book called the Save, Save Your Life Diet or Save My Life Diet, something like that. That was out in the 70s. It was a culmination of the research that the, the doctors did from Lancet when they went to Africa because they heard that people in, in Africa never had any colon disease. 
Well, when they got there, they find out the people don't have diabetes. They don't have arthritis either. They have no chronic degenerative disease. If these people don't get killed by an animal or don't die from an infection from falling off a cliff or something, they're, they're, they're very healthy. They don't have degenerative disease like we have here. They analyzed these people's digestion. They found that they ate four to five times a day. They consumed about 24 grams of crude fiber a day, which is in America, we consume four to six grams of fiber a day. These people over here are consuming 24. Their stools are odorless and they poop like four to five times a day, which is exactly their eating pep. They eat four to five times a day. They poop four to five times a day. But they don't have an odorous, strong smelling poop. Their, their poop had the perfect balance of all the correct bacteria. Mm. So that, that states your case right there. Do you guys struggle with brain fog or having difficulty focusing? I know I do. Do you struggle with recalling names or dates or where you left things? Well, I've got good news for you. Newtopia, powered by Bi Optimizers, has created a brand new one of a kind product called Kala Genius. It has collagen, cocoa, cacao, different kinds of mushrooms. It's awesome. Kala Genius is delicious. It's sweetened with stevia. It tastes like a rich chocolate elixir. So when you want something sweet, just mix it up with a little bit of water or milk or almond milk, whatever you like, and enjoy. You can also mix it with your morning coffee. Now, you know I always take care of you guys. And so my listeners, if you go to newtopia.com slash genius or use wasteaway10 during your checkout, you're going to save 10%. That's newtopia.com slash genius and use wasteaway10 during your checkout. Do it now and your brain will thank you. So tell us... Um, Back to what we were saying, I loved what you said about that transit time and eliminating. So when you eat, ultimately, you, if you look at hours. that for 24 yeah. hours, and, and a really good test for that um, that I've done in before is to eat beets. I was just going to say that. Beets yeah. will make your poop like basically bright red. Right. And so you can actually test it, eat the beets, look at what time it is, and then see how long, you know, did it take for those beats to come out? Any other tricks like that that you can do to see what your transit time is? No, that's a very good one. I just want to add some other information to that, that if you eat the beats by themselves, you're going to get the fastest, fastest transit time. If you eat them in a mixed meal, a meal with protein and some other things, then that's going to slow that down. But it still should be 24 hours. But you might find if you eat the beets alone, you you may even poop them out in 12 to 18 hours. Mm. But in a mixed meal, you'll get them. They should be 24. Okay, good. Um, and let's talk about, have you done any studying on um, food combining at all? Because I know for me, when I do food combining, I feel like a million bucks. Mm -hmm. Meaning I am eating kind of vegetables with protein and then like eating fruit by itself. Right. I feel like a million bucks. Can you talk about food combining at all? Food combining is most valid when you're dealing with blood type A's, I have found. Type O's don't always make, it doesn't always make a difference for them. But type A's, it's really beneficial, food combining. And type A's tend to lean towards eating a more vegetarian or... um. I almost I'll say even Asian diet, higher in grains, vegetables, more the way the Asians eat. That's the ideal diet for a type A. And when they do that and they combine, follow all the combining rules, they usually run like a clock. It's when they start violating those rules that, that it's not so great. But any blood type could benefit from food combining because it's, it's basic common sense in one way. The Diamonds, who wrote the book um, on food combining, the original book, well, they did a they did a very good uh, job at putting it all together, but in a lot of ways, it is common sense. Fruit is best eaten alone because fruit has the highest transit time out of anything. So when you start mixing fruit with too many other foods, you got those other foods pushed out of your stomach prematurely before the hydrochloric acid has really had an opportunity to, to break down and denature the proteins. That's why you typically would want to eat fruit alone. But when you that. when you mix grains in there see because all the foods have a different expected transit time with animal protein being the slowest so that's where, when you combine animal protein with vegetables particularly 
leafy greens, you get an optimal scene because the leafy greens don't require a lot of HCL and they tend to act like a fiber to push the, the, the animal protein through your system. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that you recommend is the, in the beginning is frozen castor oil capsules, Mm -hmm. uh, doing that in the very beginning. Talk about that for just a bit. Castor oil is kind of unique. If um, we erase from the memories of a lot of people out there being chased by, as a child, by the adults with this big spoon of castor oil that they were looking to get, just erase that for a second and look at it in in a new unit of time. Castor oil is highly antiparasitic and antifungal. And when it enters your intestinal tract, there are enzymes in your intestines which convert the castor oil into substances which are highly poisonous to parasites and candida, but uh, not poisonous to you. We give it in a frozen form because we want it to pass through the stomach. If the castor oil sits in your stomach too long, it causes a purge and it gives you diarrhea which for some people might be okay. That may be what they want to do. They may want to flush themselves out. But for the for our purposes, we want the castor oil to go through the stomach, go into the intestines, and then start to break down so that the castor oil starts to loosen things that are stuck in there. There can be a lot of stagnant fecal matter in your intestinal tract that's just sitting there. And the castor oil is the ideal thing to lubricate it so it starts to move. And being that it's antifungal and antiparasitic, if the castor oil encounters any harmful organisms in any of the poop that's stagnant, it immediately starts to kill them. That's why the castor oil is such a, such a good um, item to use for that purpose. And do you feel like that's the castor oil, the frozen castor oil is really helping kill the parasites? Yes. uh, So much so that we had using the frozen castor oil on our phase zero program as an option. And uh, about a year ago, we switched it because we, we just put it in and made it mandatory that everybody do it because we had so many people telling us about all these in, unusual things they were passing when they were taking it and how they just felt so much better when, after they had a bowel movement from using the frozen castor oil capsules. So let's say that someone is taking, you know, the candy loosener and the candy scrub mm-hmm. and, um, you know, maybe you prescribed four capsules to them in the morning and at night, would you say that maybe like in different phases, when you meet with people, some people, you might say, look, you're only going to take one capsule in the morning or one capsule Absolutely. It depends on their body weight, how big they are. You know, like a a guy who's seven foot tall, weighs 300 pounds, obviously can, can use much more than just one. You probably, we would probably put him on the maximum, which is seven, seven capsules, AM and PM. Twice a day would be the maximum we would give people. And that, you know, so a very big person, you'd give more. A person who's constipated, you would give more. But somebody who's small, whose bowels appear to be moving okay, you wouldn't give him a lot. You'd give him just enough to get the correct response from it. Now, what about in someone's li- like taking that many capsules? Is that too much for someone's liver to be able to process if they're having liver issues or anything like that? Well, castor oil packs have been used traditionally as, a, as something to help the liver. So I would say no, no on the castor oil. But there's a caveat here. People who get bad reactions from supplements, people who take supplements and experience headaches or, or pain on the right side or get nauseous, things like this, there's a possibility there's one of two things wrong with them. It's very well known and documented that people with low stomach acid who take medications or or supplements can have bad reactions to them. But also people with liver gallbladder problems, particularly if your gallbladder bile is, is blocked. A lot of supplements have a natural um, reaction in terms of stimulating your liver and gallbladder to release bile. And if you have gallstones or if you have a blocked uh, gallbladder pathway, when you take supplements, you'll get pain or you could feel nauseous. And that would be a sign that you actually, there's a pre-existing blockage of either sludge or gallstones there. It's Mm -hmm. not that the the, the pill you're taking is is necessarily bad or hurting you. It's that your body's not tolerating the pill because it has a pre-existing problem. So if if, if anyone out there is listening and they, They'd like to take supplements, but every time they take supplements, they get pain on the right side 
or they have nauseousness or something like that, there's a pretty, there's a pretty good chance they may have a gallbladder problem. And then what do you suggest for that if they are experiencing that? Well, I would suggest they go to their doctor and get some kind of a scan to see how bad the problem is. Because if it's, um, if it's, a, if it's a minor problem, there's a possibility the doctor may have a medicine that can help them flush the stone. Or they can go ahead and look on the internet at some of the traditional remedies that have been used to flush stones by people who are herbalists and whatnot. And they can deal with it that way. But if their gallbladder is really impacted with stones, and unfortunately, they may have to have it removed. There could be no way around that. Mm. Well, this has been amazing. We're out of time. I'd love for you to come back on when we have a little bit more time because you are filled with so much knowledge. And tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you and get on to this treatment. Yes, they can find us on Facebook and Instagram. And they could also visit our three websites, health-truth.com, the New York City Candida Doctor, and the New York City Thyroid Doctor. We'd be happy to help. All right. Well, you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now.